Hello everyone. A little girl asked, Dad, are you still growing? No baby, why do you ask? He replied. Because Dad, the top of your head is coming through a hair. She said. Friends, do you remember as a child comparing your height and physical growth with that of your parents or elders in your family and wanted to be tall and strong like them? Do you sometimes look in the mirror to see how your body looks compared to others? Do you check your body regularly to ensure that you are well and healthy? Do you periodically take stock of your financial situation? If you are so concerned about your physical, economic or financial status, are you also concerned about your spiritual well-being? How often do you measure your spiritual growth? Is your faith deeper or shallower than last year or when you first believed in Jesus or when you were baptized? Are you growing in your faith or losing your faith? Friends, these are the questions St. Paul addresses in today's second reading of his letter to the Ephesians. The Apostle Paul, originally known as Saul, was a devout Jew and persecutor of Christians before his conversion. Paul proudly recounts his Jewish heritage and past life in his letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. He says, Circumcised on the eighth day of my life, I was born of the race of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrew parents. In the matter of the law, I was a Pharisee. As for religious fervor, I was a persecutor of the church. As for the uprightness embodied in the law, I was faultless. Yes, Paul was a hardcore Jew. But after his conversion, he devoted his life wholly to preaching the gospel of Jesus. His zeal and passion did not change at his conversion. He had great passion for Judaism and he revealed the same passion for the gospel. He was excited and eager to preach the gospel to all, especially to Gentiles. Who are Gentiles? Gentiles are non-Jews. The Jews and the Gentiles were not just different groups of people who lived in the same land, but they were enemies who were openly hostile to one another for hundreds of years. The Jews saw themselves as divinely chosen people but considered the Gentiles as people without hope and without God. They regarded the Gentiles as aliens, outcasts, idolaters, sinners, and circumcised and unclean, whereas the Gentiles considered the Jews as superstitious and scrupulous. Sadly, the enmity and hatred between the Jews and the Gentiles continued even after many of them turned Christian. Besides circumcision, which was a physical division, there were many other factors that divided the Jewish and G Gentile Christians. For instance, 1. The Jewish Christians saw Christianity as a sect within Judaism, whereas the Gentile Christians saw it as a replacement of Judaism. 2. The Jewish Christians believed the Christians are still bound by some of the Old Testament law, while the Gentiles believed that Christians are completely free from the Old Testament law. 3. The Jewish Christians believed the Old Testament was the divinely inspired word of God, whereas the Gentile Christians believed the Old Testament was obsolete and irrelevant. But Paul reminded them that he was preaching the exact same gospel to both the Jews and the Gentiles and therefore all Christians equally belong to Christ and all receive gospel blessings through faith in Jesus Christ regardless of their race, color, gender or status. Paul wanted to make it clear that the Jews and the Gentiles have been brought together as part of one body in Christ. In particular, in today's text, he speaks of their condition before and after they became Christians, 
so that us believers they can together discard any irrational and unjust attitude of hostility against one another therefore one he says in Christ Jesus you who have once been far off have become near by the blood of Christ friends paul contrasted the past with the present status of the ephesian christians and reminded them that in christ everything is changed in the past they were far away from god they were separated alienated and strangers to one another but now jesus sacrificial death on the cross has broken the barriers between the jews and the gentiles and brought them close to god therefore in christ there is no longer a distinction between jews and gentiles for all who believe are god's people two he says for he is our peace he who made both the one and broke down dividing dividing wall of enmity through his flesh abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two thus establishing peace and might reconcile both with god in one body through the cross putting that enmity to death by it he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near friends paul reminded them that christ through his atoning death on the cross has fulfilled the law by abolishing the difference between the jews and gentiles and by bringing peace to all people peace is often understood simply as the absence of tension or conflict or war which is some describe as a negative or false peace according to paul peace is renewing or restoring the right relationship with god He believes that there cannot be real and true peace if one's relationship with God is broken. It cannot be realized without or being away from God, but rather in a restored relationship with God. He says that we were once enemies of God or separated from God because of the sin of Adam and Eve. But Jesus Christ through his death on the cross has put our enmity with God to death and restored our peace with God that is to say we are no longer separated from God but unified with God in Christ therefore Jesus is our peace Jesus is the way of peace Jesus is the bringer of peace thus the Ephesian Christians were reminded that through their union with Christ they were at peace with god and with each other three he says for through him we both have access in one spirit to the father friends paul wanted the ephesian christians to remember that they were now fellow citizens and members of god's family who have access to god the father through the same spirit friends what is the message for us one we are born with a sinful nature but through baptism we become dead to our old sinful nature and become alive in Christ that is to say being united with Christ or being in Christ brings about a change in us and enables us to participate in your life with God and others When our nature is changed we become like Christ in many ways we become new creatures in him we no longer make distinction between believers based on race color or social status therefore one of the greatest challenges of our faith in Jesus Christ is the readiness for change remaining stagnant with the same outlook or attitude or remaining in our sin as before is a sign of lack of spiritual growth in us. 2. Paul's instruction is a reminder that it is virtually impossible for us to experience God's peace in our lives without Jesus Christ. 
Jesus is our peace. Jesus is the way of peace. Jesus is the bringer of peace. Christ alone can bring us peace in times of conflict or hostility, whether between individuals or groups or nations. 3. Though we are strangers, through our faith in Jesus Christ we are bound together by the Spirit of God. As God's children, all of us have equal access to the grace of God. Therefore, if you are being transformed and growing in your faith every day, then thank the Lord and continue to pray in the Spirit. If you are not growing in your faith, or if your faith does not produce any fruit, or if your faith has no impact on your behavior whatsoever, then ask God for grace, because we all have access to the Savior's help. God does not refuse grace to anyone who humbly asks for it. Friends, the story of the miraculous healing of your woman with a chronic bleeding problem or hemorrhage in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verses 25 to 34, is a beautiful example of how we can come in prayer to God in with expectant faith. A woman who has been suffering from bleeding comes to Jesus for healing. But because of the crowd, she cannot go near him. She comes behind him and touches his garment, believing that she would be healed. When Jesus becomes aware that healing power has gone out from him, turns around and asks the crowd, Who touched my garment? Then the woman comes forward, frightened and trembling, because she knows what has happened to her. And she falls at his feet and tells him the whole truth. Jesus said, My daughter, your faith has restored you to health. Go in peace. Be free of your complaint. Yes, friends, if we humbly acknowledge our sinfulness and, honest, and honestly tell God the whole truth and nothing but the truth about ourselves, blessings will certainly come and will not delay, for God promises to grant us our heart's desires when we truly delight in Him. Amen. God bless you.